Okay, question 2.5. Again, we are asked to solve for uh, x over here. Now, this one here, if you've been practicing and have been going over your notes, I think in almost immediately you should be able to tell that this is a quadratic equation. Okay, so it's a little bit different from the previous one, even though I'm adding and subtracting, but um, I think something will tell us, something will tell you I can probably rewrite this as a quadratic equation. I think even um, the way we did the other one where we um, rewrite or we see that 2 to the power of x is a common factor, that is also fine to do. But this one here, you can write it as a quadratic equation and then solve it. So we have a choice. Maybe let's stick to the way we did the previous one and then see how it goes. So uh, whenever we're solving equations, we'd always say everything with x on one side, everything without x on the other side. So this one here, this 32 doesn't have an x, so I will take it that side. This is 3 times 2 to the power of x plus 2, so it should come this side. So this one stays here, doesn't change sign, so it's 2 to the power of 2x. We say this 3 times 2 to the power of x plus 2, we bring it to the other side, it's positive on this side, so when it comes to this side, it is now negative. So it's negative 3 times 2 to the power of x plus 2, and we say this 32 should go to the other side, and it's positive here, so when it goes to the other side, it is now negative uh, 32. Okay, so let's uh, try and see. All right, so what can we do here? What we do is we can remove this sum that we have over here and write it um, as a product the way we did in the previous one. And then this one, we can just rewrite it in terms of 2 to the power of x. This is 2 to the power of x squared minus 3 times 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of 2 and then this is equals to minus 32 okay then we can see okay 2 to the power of x is a common factor you might be tempted to factorize it but you will notice that if you factorize it you will still have 2 to the power of x inside the brackets unlike the other one if we factored out 2 to the power of x uh, 2 to the power of x would be outside and in the brackets I will only have terms that like terms that I can add. So let's just quickly do that one so you can see. So here if I say, uh, first let me simplify this one. I have 3 times 2 to the power of x times 2 squared which is 4. I can multiply them or just simplify before I continue. And then here I have minus 3 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4 times 3. This should be 12. So I have 12 times 2 to the power of x. This is equals to minus 32. So we say 2 to the power of x is a common factor. So I can factor it out. Let's see how far we get. So it's 2 to the power of x. And what do I have? 2 to the power of x because it's squared. If I have 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of x, that's how I get 2 to the power of x squared. And then minus 12 and then this is equals to minus 32. Now, unlike the previous one, these two I would be able to combine in the previous one. But here I cannot combine them because they are not like terms. I have two to 1, 2 to the power of x, and then I have 12. There's no way for me to combine them. So that is probably not the way to go. And that is why I said in the beginning, this is a quadratic equation. Now, if you look at this, I have 2 to the power of x squared, and then minus 12 times 2 to the power of x, and then here I have a constant. So immediately that should tell you this is a quadratic equation, and we can substitute. They will say let uh, y equal to 2 to the power of x. Please don't say let x be equal to 2 to the power of x because that will be confusing. If you represent x here is equal to 2 to the power of x, eventually you'll solve for x and then say that is your answer, but that should actually be equal to 2 to the power of x. There are 25 other letters to pick from, so um, do not pick x if the letter used in the equation is x. So that's why I let y equal to 2 to the power of x. Then you can see over here, I have 2 to the power of x. I will substitute y. I have 2 to the power of x. I'll substitute y. 
and then what I have is y squared minus 12 times y. This is equals to minus 32. Okay, then this is a quadratic equation. Um, let's see. We can bring the 32 to the other side and see what we get. So we have y squared minus 12y plus 32. This is equal to 0. So this looks like it can be factorized. So I would say I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply them, the answer is positive 32. And when I add them, the answer is minus 12. Okay, if you think about it for a minute, you should get the numbers minus 8 and minus uh, 12. So we can always see on our calculator, we say two numbers, we multiply them, and we say minus 8 times minus 4, positive 32. And we said when we add these two numbers, minus 8 and minus 4, when I add them, the answer is negative 12, which is what I'm looking for. Then what I do with the two numbers is I split this 12 up. I hope you remember how we factorize. So it is uh, y squared. And then I will say minus 8y minus 4y plus 32 is equal to 0. So you see this minus 8y minus 4y, those two give me minus 12y. So I haven't changed anything. All I have done is split that up. So um, I hope you remember the reason we split this up is so that this y can take part of the 12y and this 32 can also take part of that. When there are three terms like that, it's kind of hard to share if you can think about it in that way. But when I represent the middle term in uh, as two different parts then you can say okay y you take the 8y and then 32 you take the 4y okay and the order you put them in if I put minus 4y minus 8y it doesn't actually matter in the end your answers will be exactly the same okay so we look at these two and say what do they have in common they have y in common that is a common factor so I take that out I have y this is y minus 8 and then here, what do they have in common? They have minus 4 in common, so I have minus 4, and then I have y minus 8, this is equal to 0, okay? Then when you see these brackets are the same, that is also a common factor that you can take out, so y minus 8, and then from this one over here, if I remove y minus 8, what do I have left? I have y left, so I put that in a bracket, and from this term over here, when I remove y minus 8 out, what do I have left? y minus 4. Okay, and then this is equal to 0. Okay, so I factorize this. I have two terms multiplying and the answer is equal to 0. It means the first one, y minus 8, is equal to 0. Or the second one, y minus 4, is equal to 0. And remember, that is only true when we have x uh, sorry, when we have a product that is 0. If this was any other number except 0, then I cannot split it up like that. Okay, so we solve this one. Say y is equal to 8 or y is equal to 4. So some of you might be tempted to stop here, but remember the question was uh, to solve for x, okay, not to solve uh, for y. y is something you introduced so that um, solving looked easier. So you need to remember what y was. y was 2 to the power of x. So I have 2 to the power of x is equal to 8 or 2 to the power of x is equal to 4. Now in the first one here, 2 to the power of x is equal to 8. This means x is equal to 3. We did that in the previous one. And here, if 2 to the power of x is equal to 4, this means x is equal to 2, because 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 4.